Well, I grew up in Eugene, Oregon, and um, I grew up in a, it's, it's a um, kind of a hippie town, you know, there's like lots of hippies there, and I grew up in a middle class household, um, and um, my father's a university professor, so I think that in general I grew up in a really free-thinking liberal household. Um, so I think that feminist ideas have probably always been available to me um, through my parents and through sort of the culture that I, I grew up in. And um, when I was in high school, I I'd, um, started um, sort of studying feminist thought and um, you know, really related to strong women and, and that were my teachers and stuff. So um, I think that it was something that was already um, a part of my kind of experience, you know, from pretty early on. I, I sort of studied feminist ideas and was really interested in it. Um, and I think that um, it was something that was that appealed to me on a political front as a teenager because I was involved in um, anti-war activism and like environmental activism and and so feminist activism made sense to me politically. Well, um, I was always um, interested in music um, growing up. My dad is a musician as a hobby, and um, so I've always. Um, been interested in music and um, I just really liked going to shows when I was in high school. There's lots of music that happened in Eugene at the Wow Hall. There's always shows to go to and was it, when I was a teenager I started liking bands like Sonic Youth and um, Throwing Muses and Fire Hose and would always go to shows and come up to Portland and go to shows and so um, I was really interested in independent music for a long time. Um, well, I think that all of the bands from the Northwest are have always been a big influence on me. Bands like Beat Happening and Mecha Normal, Bikini Kill and Bratmobile. Um, I think they're probably the biggest influences because I was able to see them several times live and watch their performances and I gained a lot of, of insight, I think, mm -hmm. from seeing them. I don't really think about my voice that much. I mean, I, I just love singing, and um, there's a lot of other people that I that I think I wanted to sound like. I really think that I tried to imitate Kathleen Hanna when I first was in a band and really wanted to sound like her. I also really wanted to sound like Sinead O'Connor, you know. But um, I just sort of, you know, it took me a few years, I think, but I've really found my own voice. And that was a really, you know, amazing thing. And um, I really wanted always to be a singer that grabbed people's attention, you know. And and I think that I sort of naturally have the ability to sing very, you know, prettily. You know, I could, you know, I could be like a kind of pretty normal singer if I wanted to. But it's it's part of the music. Um, that the vocals are, are really striking and really sort of confrontational almost and that's always something that I was conscious of, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, actually when I was a first year student at Evergreen, I did a documentary about um, women in music and um, I ran around with my video camera to all these different shows like um, Sun Velvet Sidewalk and Beat Happening and Nirvana and um, Bikini Kill and Bratmobile's first show, and I videotaped that, and I interviewed all of them, and Calamity Jane, and um, I interviewed them about women in music, and this was actually before Riot Girl had started, mm -hmm. but um, I just, I was working with another partner about, and we were doing like the sort of a Northwest music scene documentary, and I was really um, interested in listening to the women, you know, talk about their own feelings, and so we ended up making two separate films and, and kind of having a falling out. And mine was about women in music and it was mostly about Bikini Kill and Bratmobile and their 
thoughts about um, feminism and music. So that was like a really big part for me to get to getting to know these people and their ideas. Um, well, because we started in Olympia, we started playing here. We were the, when we first started playing, we were with really a really supportive environment. You know, we had a lot of encouragement, and I think that's really important. Um, and it just, you know, it kind of made it happen for us that people were like, you should really play this show, you should really make a record. And um, I don't think that it would have happened otherwise. And because I knew that we had this strength and this support when we did enter in situations that were, um, you know, really awful, that it was, you know, something that we could just get through and, and you know, go on. I mean, there were situations where we got heckled, you know, and, and um, yelled at on stage and, and harassed, a lot of, you know, things like that. A lot of fights with sound guys, so many fights. I mean, um, there's a lot of control issues that happen in music, and um, I think a lot of men are, you know, really able to sort of use their knowledge of music in a way that's um, really exclusive to women. And that was m much more true in the early 90s, you know, and now there's a lot more women who are doing sound and who know the technical aspects of it, you know. But that was, that was a very big part that was um, difficult when we first started was like not knowing anything and it sounding really awful and not knowing how to, you know, sort of get what you want on, in the sound system as well. When Slater Kenny started, we didn't talk about Riot Girl. We didn't want to talk about it. And um, I think it's only been the past couple of years that we've, that I've really wanted to talk about it with any journalists because I felt like it had a really um, bad reputation, I guess, um, in the media as being, um, you know, this really kind of stupid, superficial, non-musical movement, you know, and it's just, it was just really untrue. There were a lot of extremely knowledgeable, talented artists and musicians involved in it. And that was who it was started by, you know, but it became labeled as more of like a fashion movement or something. Mm -hmm. um, well, I just think that labels are really confining and I think that Slater Kinney is, um, has always been a really multi-dimensional band and they're the three of us in it are really different people like you know I was a riot girl I still am a riot girl you know it's something that's really important to me and um, that's part of the band because I'm part of the band you know um, so I just think that um, it's really it's really important to not pay too much attention to media and to labels like that because you know it, it can be really confining and you just have to um, show that you can, you can, you know, be a really multi-dimensional person, you know, and, and you just have to remember that when people, like, write about you or do something in the media about it.